What's going on, everybody? Eric Barassa here, and this week I want to do something a little bit different. Uh, I Instead of doing a transcription of a song or a solo, you guys can still put your requests down below in the comments. I might be able to get around to doing one this weekend, but I want to go through Guitar World's 100 Things Every Guitarist Should Know. Okay, so I haven't read this yet, um, and we're gonna go through and just see what kind of advice they have, and I'm gonna give my opinion, my two cents on uh, what I think about their, their tips. So I think this could be really fun. It looks like they've got some things from Joe Satch, from Steve Vai, from, uh, from, uh, from Mark Tremonti, and some others. So let's see what they've got, okay. So here we are on page 42, Luke Tomarello. I usually like what he has to say about um, guitar playing, so this, this should be fun. It says, lean back, get comfy, and soak up 18 pages worth of sound advice from GW's editors, writers, and columnists, not to mention Joe Satch, Steve Vai, Misha Maso, Joe Banamas. Tom Morello. Someday I should tell you guys the story about when I met Joe Banamasa. It was, uh, it was pretty awesome. Um, Mark Tramonte, John Five, Jim Root, Ben Harper, Eddie Van, Yon Yon, and Mao. Uh, okay, so they instructed me to sit back, get, get comfy. Oh, okay, I am back and I am comfy. Uh, here we go. Number one, practice slowly. Well, that's a no brainer. I feel like as a guitar teacher, uh, it is, it's like 90% of my job. When I am teaching somebody how to play guitar, 90% of everything I say is, okay, now do it again, but slow down. Um, yes, 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 yes. Now, there are times when you do want to practice quickly. Like, uh, you know, if you're running a marathon, um, then yeah, you don't need to practice sprints. But if you're trying to sprint the 100 meter dash, you do have to actually practice sprinting. So same thing with speed development. But I feel like it's about an 80-20 split. About 80% of your time, you should be going just straight up slow. And then uh, the other 20% of your time, maybe work on actually playing fast. And uh, that, that's when I saw the biggest gains in my playing. Okay, number two, get your guitar set up properly. This is of supreme importance. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Number three, your string gauge is really, really important. Um, you know, I do think it's important to find what works for you, what you like, and to experiment with some different str string gauges. But, you know, if I was, I typically use nines on my electric guitars and 11s on my acoustic. I, you know, I don't want to work very hard. <laughs> so if I use nines on my guitar, uh, or if I switch to tens, like it's probably not going to change my playing that much, except I'm going to be a little slower and have to work a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, Rick Beato did that great video on comparing the, the string gauges and you can hear a difference, um, between like the 11s and 12s versus the nines and the tens, but it's not so much of a difference that it's going to change the path of your career. It's not so different that it's going to completely alter you sounding like you, the way you play. I mean, Satriani used nines for decades. And now he uses tens. And does he sound that different? No. The, the biggest change in his tone seemed to have come when he switched back to using Marshalls. Um, but, you know, when he switched to using tens, it's like, so what? He, he now tunes down a half step and uses tens. But uh, anyway, all right, let's move on because this video is going to be way too long. <laughs> Number four, you're never too young to start. Okay. All right. Yeah. It let, this says, if you're a parent and your young child expresses an interest, the best thing you can do is let them have a go at it, get an inexpensive but playable guitar and let them explore. Don't be pushy. Too much pressure can overwhelm and kill enthusiasm. I could not disagree with this more. Okay. I'm going to make some people mad with this, but uh, I, I have generally found about age six or seven is the best time to start. Could you start at like age four or five? Do we have a student here at my music school, the Fort Worth Music Academy, that is, uh, that's been with us for five, six years, and he started when he was five, and now he's pretty awesome? Yes. Is that rare? Yes. Uh, I have found that once a kid is about seven years old, they are pretty much universally ready to begin learning to play guitar. Um, 
if you start them at age four or five, yeah, you could maybe get them uh, having some results. But progress is going to be so slow most of the time that you'd be better off just waiting a couple of years um, for them to, to really get the, the mechanics of, of their fingers. Furthermore, I also don't believe in the philosophy of let's just put it in their hands and see how it goes. No. You get, it's got to be like brushing teeth. We got to teach kids self-discipline and we have, to, we have to get them practicing. Now, for a lot of parents, they don't want to force their kids to do it at home. And I get it because there's so much as a parent myself that you have to keep track of and remember to make your kids do. It can be a little overwhelming. It's just another thing they got to do. But the reality is if you just wait for them to, wow, that got a lot brighter all of a sudden. If you just wait for them to be like inspired to want to play, they're not going to do it. They'd rather play outside, play with their friends, play on their iPads, the, their Xboxes, their Nintendos, and, and, uh, and, what, and whatnot. Why, why would I, as a seven-year-old kid, want to invest time into playing guitar, something that's hard, that takes a long time for uh, big payoffs, um, when I can go play Roblox or Minecraft, where I get that immediate dopamine hit. Okay, so we have to teach kids delayed gratification. We have to instill it in them. Are they going to suffer a little? Yeah, but so what? It's the long-term benefits far outweigh the immediate gratification of that. Um, that's one of the reasons why this is, I'm not trying to push our <laughs> program at our school or anything, but that's why we created the Unlimited Guitar Program, because parents got tired of fighting with their kids to practice, but they knew they needed to practice. So we created a program that was affordable that allows parents to drop off their kids with us as many times a week as we have classes available, kind of like a karate school, and they can come train with us and they have a good time because kids tend to have fun with us doing lessons and they like it when it's not their parents making them practice. They're okay with a teacher making them practice. Um, and, uh, and, and they get results that, that way. So anyway, all right, now we're on to number five. I might have to make this a two or three parter. <laughs> oh, number five, it says you're never too old to start. Okay, well, I guess that's true. My experience has been over the last like 12 years of teaching guitar that there is kind of an age uh, limit to this where I don't know if it's the mindset shifts or what happens, but so far, and please tell me if you are in this age bracket and you have successfully learned guitar, um, I I'd love to hear about it. I really would because I, I will try someone who is age 70 will call us and we'll say, cool, come on in, let's try it. And they tend to just not agree with our teaching philosophy they tend not to agree with our school policies. They just tend to be in a totally different ballpark in terms of their mindset when it comes to learning. We've had a lot of success with students in their 60s, their 50s, um, all the way down to uh, about age five, six, seven. Um, but I have yet to meet anyone 70 years of age or older that has been successful on the guitar. So if, if uh, I'd love to hear y'all's experience, uh, any of you guys that are guitar teachers or music teachers in general, um, if you've had success with someone who is above the age of 70, that's super cool. If you could tell me your secret, I'd love to know, but I haven't cracked the code on that yet. Number six, nobody wants your girlfriend or boyfriend in the band. This is true. I made the mistake of having my girlfriend in a band when I was in high school and it created a lot of problems. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, number seven, ooh, we get into Joe Satriani. And you guys that know me know how much I love Joe Satch. Um, I worship at the altar of Joe Satriani. Number seven, he says, visit Bizarro World. I don't know what this means. Let's read it. If you're headed into the studio or an audition, be prepared to play the opposite of what you think is right. Learn to entertain crazy suggestions from a band member um, as opportunities may shine in a different way. Be prepared to go clean or distorted. Do humbug instead of single coil. Oh, you want me to play more notes or fewer notes? Uh, so being flexible. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Of course, Joe Satriani, god of the guitar, would recommend something so great. Uh, it's really easy to get trapped in um, just doing what everybody else does and 
playing notes and writing songs the way everybody else does and it all becomes super derivative. And I think we have to constantly fight against ourselves to try to do something different, to be willing to use a Korgamiku pedal for your lead sound instead of, you know, just the regular thing. Um, that's, that's great advice. Number eight, Joe Satriani says, match string action with the task at hand. So that makes sense, you know, different, different heights for strings is gonna, you know, depending on what kind of song you're playing, what kind of guitar you're using. Number nine, be sensitive to gain. Watch your gain issues. So that's that's really great because I have some guitars that are uh, have pickups that are really high output, and and then it, I my Mesa I can't crank the gain all the way on it. It just is too much. So I dial it back and still get the sound I want. And then I have other guitars that have really passive pickups that sound incredible, but you really got to crank the gain on the amp. So I like to find the balance of how little gain can I use and still get the sustain that I need um, to, to do what needs to be done. If you can't do pinch harmonics, then you probably don't have enough gain. But if, uh, you know, just find, turn your gain up until right where you have enough um, gain to be able to, to play pitch, pinch harmonics. If that's even what you're after, it may not be what, what you're after, but for me, it's how much crazy compressed lead guitar shred shenanigans can I get uh, from as little gain as possible. Okay, number 10, this is where, those were Satriani's three. Um, learn the Indian pentatonic scale, okay? Um, the Mixolydian pentatonic, it replaces the minor pentatonic flat third with a major third, exotic sound, great over one chord vamps and blues and rock. So, I mean, I guess a more general bit of advice would be try learning some different scales. There, there are sometimes too many scales and like the guitar grimoire that has like that, like a hundred thousand scales. Um, you know, I, I find that like just learning one new scale that you've never played before and messing around with that and trying to write a song with it is, is enough to kind of get the creative juices floating, flowing. I don't think it has to be Indian pentatonic. It can be whatever, like the, the Hira Joshi. I remember when I learned that, that opened a whole new world for me. Number 11, don't be afraid to move on stage. Okay, this is great. I kind of have the opposite problem. I need to move less when I'm on stage because uh, I tend to move so much that it inhibits my ability to actually play successfully. So, um, you know, if you stand super still, then get try to, um, number one, get comfortable enough with your playing that you don't have to 100% focus on your playing. If Anything you're playing on stage requires 100% concentration. Don't be playing that on stage. You need to be able to play things that come automatically to you. Practice things that are hard, but when you play on stage, play stuff you know you're going to do well 100% of the time. Uh, and then that frees you up to be able to concentrate a little bit on moving and putting on a good show. There's nothing worse than when a band sounds great and they have no stage presence. All right, so let's just do a, number, uh, a few more of these for today's video, and then uh, we'll continue going through this. I don't know if you guys are going to like this or not, but I, I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, anytime I can just talk and rant and rave, uh, I, I really enjoy it. Number 12 from Steve Vai. He says, impulse is overrated. Uh, I don't know what that means. When I record a solo, sometimes I just play one pass on the fly and see what happens. But I usually, what I usually do is play something a bunch of times. I sit and work, I loop it. And then um, sometimes when I just record, something is inspired and just comes out or it could be crap. Okay. Oh, I love this. Okay. So um, I think what he's saying is like sometimes, you know, just playing by the seat of your pants and improvising a solo can give you the best results. Um, but he's saying, you know, a lot of times for me, that's not the case. I sit and I work it out and I work it and work it until it's perfect. You know what? I find that that's the case for me. And uh, of course, I'm nowhere near the level of someone like Steve I. But when I play guitar over and over again um, and I, I just loop a solo, the first couple of ideas might be kind of cool, but I find that the more I play the exact same solo over and over and over and over again, I start coming up with new ideas, better phrasing. It starts to really kind of light on fire. And um, yeah, it, it's the more I refine a solo, it, it never becomes worse. It always becomes better. You know, sometimes you, you, um, you know, you 
you draw a picture or you try playing a song and the more you do it, kind of the worse it gets, kind of the first take was the best. I find that's a lot of times true with some rhythm playing and stuff, but when it comes to crafting a really good solo, uh, I find the more time you can spend on it, the better. So yeah, great advice, Steve Vai. Let's see if we can get to number 15 for today. Number 13 from Steve Vai, it takes two. Collaborating is actually more intimate than most relationships. Um, yeah, so I, he's encouraging collaboration. I have found that, yeah, my best songs were written by Carlos Shalinski. <laughs> so Carlos is a dear friend of mine who is a better bassist and guitarist and all around better musician than me. And he has played bass with me for a number of years. And uh, he, uh, whenever I come up with an idea, I think I come up with some pretty good ideas for songs and for melodies. Uh, but if I present it to him, he always takes it to the next level. He goes, oh, what if we, what if we, and he's from Cancun, right? He's, he's, uh, he's Mexican and super high energy, um, kind of like me. He's like, a, he's like a Mexican version of me. He's like, what if we, uh, what if we change this harmony and, and we do this? And then what if we invert this chord and then invert this melody? And I'm just like, ah, oh, dude, I'm overwhelmed. But then we, we work it out and it's like, wow, that was incredible. So if you're ever listening to one of my songs uh, and you hear something that you're like, whoa, that was a really cool chord change. It was probably Carlos's idea. <laughs> All right, here we go. Number 14, play total crap for 10 minutes. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna lie. I did thumb through this uh, about a week ago and I, I noticed this one um, where it says, play total crap for, for 10 minutes. It just caught my eye. I was trying not to read anything ahead of time, but um, I was like, what if I did that? What if I didn't try to play well when I first, sit, you know, cause I usually practice for an hour or two each day when I sit down to practice. And um, you know, the first 10 minutes I sound terrible and I'll get frustrated that it doesn't sound good. And so I tried just like sort of just playing fun stuff for the first 10 minutes and not worrying about how I sounded. And uh, sure enough, I've, I've enjoyed the warm-up process more, and I've found that I, it warms me up as effectively as doing some boring, you know, four-note-per-string chromatic scale. That's cool. Helps just shake things off, as this says. All right, last one for today, number 15. The guitar is infinite. If you can even conceive of the idea that everything that can be played on a guitar has already happened, then you're really missing the point of what the creative process is um the process of creation in any field is infinite nothing is going to run out that's like telling the universe it's not infinite that's a really great uh point because i always feel like i've i've exhausted all ideas and i go through dry spells but then i give it enough time and i learn other people's songs and it, it's weird it's weird to me how many different melodies and different songs and kind of songs and even songs that sound similar to each other how different those can still be um, and, and in the, the plethora of music that's out there, uh, it's, it's crazy to think that we've exhausted all possibilities. So it's, I, I, that really gives me a lot of hope that even if a lot of my songs start to sound the same and, you know, my, my albums have the same kind of feel to them, uh, just knowing how many different nuanced ways, uh, I can rewrite the same song, <laughs> you know, every artist if you're not super familiar with their music, you'd be like, well, all their songs sound the same, right? And when you really get deep into the music, when you're really a big fan of theirs, you, you appreciate that all of the songs sound cohesive and they sound like they're from the same artist. So they have that familiarity, but they have enough differences to each song that it sounds new and fresh. Um, and so that's super fun. I just realized I missed a spot shaving. I got to fix that wow how pro of you eric uh, but, but, uh. anyway you guys um let me know what you think of this i'm i'm planning on going through the rest of these but wow this is exhausting and I'm, i only got through 15 i have no idea how long this video is it's probably a good 15 20 25 60 000 hours long um so you know you guys stay safe out there and uh, i'm excited things here in texas are starting to kind of open it back up as of today i'm going to the comic book store in a little while and go uh go pick up a couple of books to read for some inspiration and for some entertainment um as my great aunt deidre always says bye